it probably comes as no surprise to hear that many athletes are at risk for injuries. Skiers, divers, gymnasts, hockey and football players and others should know what they can do to prevent athletic injuries. Joining us on this week's Health Talk are an orthopedic surgeon and a physical therapist. They'll give you tips to help athletes prevent these types of injuries, injuries that they see way too often, even among us who are weekend warriors. So stay tuned, we're up next. Andrea Peterson. And I'm Dr. Eric Mazur. Today we're going to discuss the prevention of athletic injuries with Dr. Robert Brady and Stephen Irwin. Uh, Dr. Brady is an orthopedic surgeon with Norwalk Hospital and Stephen Irwin is a senior physical therapist with Norwalk Hospital's Outpatient Rehabilitation Services. Oh, thank you so much both of you for joining Great us on the show. Great to have you on the show. This is something, you know, most people participate in athletics or their kids participate in athletics and you see the consequences and it's important to do so exactly. we, we want, we don't, people, we to want people to participate in athletics but we want people to be active in a healthy way sure absolutely so how, how, how do we go about doing it safely they, uh, you know I, first thing is that this is my favorite type of season the fall season because one the weather is phenomenal um, two my, my kids are back to school <laughs> and then three is with the sports especially you know football and you know, playoff baseball and uh, so I think it's a great time for sports. You start, you, you know, people are really starting to come out again, uh, and in particular the high school sports. I think it's a great season for that. And, and so this is really, uh, this keeps our season, this is our season for orthopedic surgeons when we're busier too, because uh, we start to see the real uh, in, incept of uh, increase in, in, in our sports. So, so Steve, uh, what, with kids doing so much, and they, I should say, I think there's the, the frequency of competitive sports has mm -hmm. gone way, way up. Correct. And I've also heard a lot about the specialization mm -hmm. of athletes starting at very young ages mm -hmm. so that they're competing at much higher levels. Uh, what should they be doing to prevent injuries? These are growing kids. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in uh, the public media about football injuries, particularly. They will get to concussions a little bit. But, but what should we be doing to prevent injuries? Well, kind of one thing that you mentioned was we start specializing in sports almost too early. When I grew up, you know, you played baseball, you played football, you played soccer. Every or when I grew up, you tried to play football. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. But each season had its own sport. But now kids are, you know, they're playing football, they're training for football when they're not playing football. So you, get, you lose some of that cross-training aspect of it. And that's an important aspect because you're training different muscles for different sports rather than just focusing on one specific muscle group or kind of one specific sport. So what should we do? Should we get kids then, to get the coaches to make sure they're doing some exercises that is not sport specific if they're in one of these tracks? Yeah, I've been amazed with you know, kids, little kids, they're doing soccer all, right. all three seasons. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and that's all they do. Right. So how, how, should the coaches be aware of this, Bob? I, I think it's the education on both the coaches' part, both the parents' part, and, and really the kids. Because uh, you know, oftentimes I have parents come in, their kids are really competing at a very high level, but the aspects or the prospects of them you know, becoming a professional athlete is, is, probably, is really pretty slim. Uh, I still think, you know, I still encourage them to be as competitive as they want to be. Uh, sometimes we may push our kids a little bit too much. Uh, I think we're particularly competitive in this area because a lot of the kids are, are, are not only want to be professional athletes, but they want to increase their college admissions. So they're trying to get to uh, a level of school and com competitiveness to, to, to get them into better schools, which I think is good. You just have to do it in, in the right manner. And I completely agree with Steve as, you know, the cross-training aspects of it, making sure that if you are, even if you are very competitive at one sport, you do some other, uh, some other sport, some other exercise to train other muscles, because that's when you start to see the repetitive stress injuries, when you're just using one muscle or certain muscles all the time. So maybe you can tell us a little bit, what are some of the most common injuries that, that you see? So I, I like to kind of qualify it into different parts of the season, especially like I said, you know, with the fall season, summer's over, kids are just getting back to school. They're starting to get in their preseason. So the preseason uh, is when we often see a lot of our beginning injuries, our, our, st uh, our sprains, our strains, 
hip flexors, you know, ankles, because they haven't been, you know, doing that sport all summer or, you know, since spring, and, and now they're doing double sessions, triple sessions Jumping in, back into in, it. in their, in their pre-seasons. And so that's when we see a lot of the, uh, of the strains. Uh, we'll see so the, the overheating inj uh, injuries. Should the coaches be more careful then as they sort of enter this, this aggressive phase of training that they do it with some, some ramp up? Is that the, the message? Yes, hundred percent. I mean, that's, that's really the key is that, you know, if they're, if, and, you know, the advent of all the club sports actually has uh, increased the, the kids playing summers all, or sports all year long. So it's maybe less so, but I think they, they really do increase in, in, in the fall uh, in particular. Uh, so making sure that you are, you know, if they haven't been exercising regularly, that you are uh, increasing slowly. So, so you shouldn't be sitting on the beach all summer and then going into Correct. double sessions of football Correct. on August 30th. Right. You, you really need to be... You shouldn't be, and actually, maybe you could say something about deconditioning, because my understanding is that if you stop doing something, you decondition fairly rapidly. And Too I'll, rapidly. Yeah, say, say something about that, Steve. You know, it's, it's very important to stay active, especially kids now that are starting to play sports. You know, they had the summer off, so they kind of weren't doing too much, and now they're starting to get back into school and back into sports. You know, I can speak from my personal experience. When I played sports, I wasn't always the best at conditioning off season. You know, I thought I was good enough to just, you know, take the off season off and come back into sports That's and then just kind of pick the up. Off season. Exactly, <laughs> you know, but kind of knowing what I know now, if I could go back to myself and, and talk to myself in high school, really prepare your body kind of for the sports that you're about to do. And it's not just, you know, if you're a baseball player, you know, working on your shoulder, it's about working on your core, working on your hips, getting your whole body kind of in tune to take stress off specific joints that are more prone to injury. I think that's really important because it sounds like there's a, there's a balance. We don't necessarily want the pitcher just pitching all year round. Right. Uh, so we want to have a balance in terms of what activity that pitcher is doing, but thinking about the whole body, the whole person, especially maybe on the off season and the ramp up sounds like it's really important. I think it's really, I, I absolutely agree. I think that also there's, certain sports that ha are prone to certain injuries. You know, we talked about your granddaughter that does gymnastics and the, they're, they have a lot of spine issues and so you gotta focus on their core besides, you know, but you have to also increase their flexibility or else, cause that puts more stress on their spine. So there's certain, you know, our, our baseball players are gonna be more prone to shoulder injuries. So making sure that they're, they're flexible and, uh, and strong in that area, but you also have to, you know, uh, tie that in with you know the other body parts, uh, but certainly you know with the with the preseason, you know coming in warmed up, you know stretching, you know obviously during the during well, the well tell during let the, me just stop you there because I I I'm very confused about stretching. <laughs> uh, tell us the right way to stretch. I mean the old days I used to start cold and stretch first, and I don't I don't I don't want to even go through that. What's the right way to stretch? <laughs> And uh, tell us. I'm gonna let Steve take Steve, that. yeah. <laughs> well, there's a big debate as far as, you know, stretch before activity or stretch after activity. In my personal opinion, I feel like we call it a kind of a dynamic warm up before activity, not static stretching where you're just kind of stretching and then holding that position for 30 seconds. Kind of doing more of kind of jogging, different kind of calisthenics where you're, you're moving, but you're not moving too rapidly to overstress the body. I feel like that prepares you the best for kind of a sport and then afterwards, after your workout, after your, your sport or your game, that's where you do kind of your static stretching to really kind of focus on and your, your recovery. Static stretching, explain what that is. Essentially what that just means is, you know, choosing a position or a muscle to stretch and then holding that stretch for 30 to 60 seconds and then doing a few repetitions of that. Now, I'd always thought that stretching prepares you for exercise. How do, what does static stretching do at the end of exercise? Does, is that just to maintain long-term flexibility? Exactly, it kind of aids in recovery. It, it kind of aids in reducing muscle soreness after sports or after a workout. And what the kind of reasoning for not doing stretching before activity is stretching inherently will weaken a joint because it stretches out the muscles, it stretches oh, out the ligaments. So now you're setting yourself up where you're putting the body at a weakened position and then going out and playing a sport. 
So that's so back kind of gym class where we started with jumping jacks. That wasn't a bad idea then. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's and you're starting to see that now in professional sports where they're doing more dynamic warm ups before the games rather than just having a trainer stretch them out. What's the importance? You know, especially kids. They're transitioning from the academic school day and social stuff into sports. And so we're talking about warm ups and the importance kind of cardiovascularly. Is there an importance in kind of getting getting mentally ready to engage in, in athletics and training as well, kind of yeah, focusing? Uh, yeah, I think the, the mental aspect of it is really pretty important. You know, how you kind of shut off between, you know, you know your academics and, and athletics. You know, I think the beginning of the year is obviously easier when they're getting in the mid-season and, and particularly playoff season, it gets a little bit harder because you have a lot more stress. Um, you know, there are some programs that are incorporating kind of, you know, meditation and yoga within their kind of, you know, uh, you know pre-warm-ups, a part of, you know, just kind of sitting there. A lot of our kids will listen to music, you know, just to kind of get their heads in a I saw you know, the better, Olympics, better the swimmers state. Were all swimmers were sitting uh, with uh, earpieces and listening to music before their meets. So I think that's a, that's a big component to it is the is mental aspect. It's been just being able to shut down rest of the world basically and focusing on, on, on uh, whatever sport or, or so that activity you're, not you're doing. distracted and therefore right. more prone to yeah. injuries. Yeah, we only have a minute left, but I, I just want to get back to the younger children mainly sure. because they, they are getting so focused on athletics early on. What should, as parents and grandparents, what, what do we do? Should we be, do these different coaches, are, are they being trained in modern sports medicine theories so that they're doing the right things for our kids you know uh, are we are there organizations we should be aware of who, who are doing this where, where do we go to make sure our kids are, are getting the right uh, process for getting into sports I, I don't know in, if there are I'm sure there may be things in particular out there organizations in particular uh, I think that if you have a kid is who's an athlete and wants to be an athlete and wants to be competitive you, 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 you certainly shouldn't discourage it if the kid if you have a child that, that likes sports but is not you know dead set on doing it and wants to do other stuff you have to let them participate and and, and expose them I have young children I try to expose them to different sports at different parts of the season so figure out what they what they this want. whole idea of cross training and making sure that they stay physically fit right in all the muscles right. rather than just the ones they need for right. certain events, I guess is what we could do as parents. Right. Right. For development. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Well, thank, thank you. you That's a really so important much. discussion. We certainly uh, we didn't get a chance to talk too much about the details of some of those, but we, we'll get to that at another yeah. time. This Absolutely. was a really helpful discussion. Thank you so much. That's all the time we have. I want to thank both of our guests today, Dr. Robert Brady and uh, Steve Irwin, for coming on the show and giving us all very valuable advice. Please do send us your questions and comments to healthdoc at wchn.org. Eric and I would love to hear from you. Right, and thanks, thanks for watching Health Talk. Be well. <laughs>